Parsha Shlach is one of the most transformative parshiot in Sefer Bamidbar. It is the story of how Bnei Yisrael went from a nation about to enter the land into a nation that wandered around the desert for 40 years. We have to understand what went wrong. If you look at the psukim themselves, just learning the pshat of the psukim, it's very hard to tell what they went wrong. They were asked by Moshe to go into the land, to see the land, to check out the land, to see what type of land it was, what terrain it was, the type of people that were there, and the type of cities that, were, that they inhabited. And what they did was exactly that. They came back from the land, and they told Ben Israel, and they told Moshe Rabbeinu exactly what they saw. What did they do wrong? They just followed their instructions. But if you look at the Psukim themselves, you find that they did one thing wrong. They didn't just tell about the land that they saw, but rather they gave their opinion about whether or not they were able to accomplish the task that they were supposed to do. They said, you know what? It's a very difficult land, difficult, po difficult population, and we can't do it. We cannot conquer this land. Now that's where they went wrong. Moshe did not ask them to give their opinion. He asked them to tell them about what was in the land. However, if you look at Masechet Erechin, they have a very different way of viewing this parsha. First and foremost, they try to understand what was the actual sin. They bring two options. Option number one was that they spoke Lashon Hara. They spoke negatively about the land. The other option they bring is an option that they didn't just speak Lashon Hara, but rather they were actually heretics. Now what was heresy in what they say? They looked at the words, the Gemara looks at the words, Ki mimenu, and says, don't read the word Mimenu, that they are stronger than us, rather Mimenu, they are stronger than him, referring to Hashem. Say that they're not just stronger than us, but rather the reason why we can't go into the land and conquer is because they're stronger than God. Now this reading of the Gemara is kind of strange because if you actually think about it, it's not written in the words of the Psukim. Why would the Gemara go in and check and change the wording of the spies in order to make it sound worse? It's one thing to say that we can't fight them because they're stronger than us. It's another thing to say that God can't fight them because they're stronger than Him. Why would the Gemara change it? But the Gemara, based upon that question, does something even stranger. It comes and says, really, it was not heresy that was really the sin that caused them to not go into the land of Israel, but rather Lashon Hara was the worst part of their sin. They had two sins. One was heresy and one was Lashon Hara. This Gemara poses two questions to us. Number one, how could the Gemara change their lack of confidence about themselves into a lack of belief in God? Number one. And number two, how could it be that if we have heresy versus Lashon Hara, even though Lashon Hara, gossip, is something that is wrong, and something that we know causes a lot of harm, we definitely wouldn't believe that it's worse than actually not believing that God's in God's power, that it's worse than heresy. Why in the world would the Gemara choose Lashon Hara as the sin that caused them not going to the land and not the heresy of not believing in God. I think that if we look at the sin of Lashon Hara, we'll find that the two sins are actually very much linked. What is Lashon Hara? Lashon Hara means negative language. Lashon, evil language. However, if you actually look at all the different types of sins across the Torah, you'll never find one that's called Ra. We don't call killing Hariga Ra. We don't call stealing Gneva Ra. It's Lashon Hara that's Dafka called Ra. Why is it that evil speech is the only one that has Ra in it? What does the word Ra mean? In English, we translate it as evil. However, if you look at other words that have the same root as Ra, we find that it actually has a very different meaning. For example, Everyone knows when we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we do tekiah, shvarim, and teruah. Teruah is a same root as ra. What is tua? It's a broken sound. Ra, across Tanakh, means broken. What does it mean to be evil? It means to be somebody who distances themselves by those around them, distances themselves both by individuals and those from God. But it also means lashon hara is lashon, is language that separates. In general, if you look at the world with open eyes and trying to see how everything in the world fits, how every individual actually adds to society, and what they can give, and what the, how you can build relationships with them, that's an attitude which is an attitude which is tov, which tries to look at the world in a way where everyone has a place, everyone fits, and everyone has what to add. Lashon hara, gossip, slander. The goal of slander is to look at the world and try to see how does this part not fit? 
Everyone has different sides to them. Everyone has good sides and bad sides. But the choice of someone who slanders, the choice of someone who speaks Lashon Hara, is to look at the world with an attitude where people don't fit and don't belong. That's Lashon Hara. It's language that causes breaking apart as opposed to bringing together. That's an attitude that views the world in such a way where things don't belong. Well, yes, Israel has good sides to it, but also has bad sides. So instead of trying to figure out how we can work with the good and use the good in order to create some sort of grand picture, in order to fit within some sort of bigger ideal, instead, we'll try and figure out how it doesn't fit with my life. How it's something that I can push to the side and I can't make in the land. That was the attitude that caused the Meraglim to reach even heresy. Because true belief in God is a is belief that everything in this world was created by God. Everything was created for a purpose. And if God has created us, then it gives us a purpose. And if God created somebody else, it gave them a purpose. So if you look at the world through godly eyes, you're going to see a world that everything is interconnected. Everything has a place. Nothing should be pushed out and nothing should be seen from a world of Ra. Rather, everything should be brought together and seen from a world of Tov. And that's what the Miraglim did wrong. The root of the problem was Lashon Ra. But that caused them to see a lack of confidence in themselves because they don't belong, because they look at the world from a place of how do things not belong as opposed to how do things do belong. And once they got to a point of lack of conf- confidence, Kikazakumi Menno, it came, the Gemara says, the next step is ki chazakumi menno. The next step is looking at a world where you don't even see God to be able to connect all the dots and connect everyone together. That's how Lashon Hara leads to a lack of confidence in oneself, a lack of confidence in one's place in this world, and therefore a lack of confidence, a lack of understanding of God's connection between everything in the world to create one beautiful ideal. Shabbat Shalom.